Hello and welcome to this video lab, Properties of Wood. Okay, in today's video lab, we're going to test the properties of wood. We're going to be using this flexural strength machine, which is also going to be able to measure the deflection. Now some of these tests that we're going to do today are valuable in the field because if we have a large construct if you're a large construction company for instance and you order a large amount of Douglas fir what you'd want to do is grab a couple of samples measure them up to make sure that they meet the published values of that material so one of the things that we're going to do today once we generate all the data necessary is we're going to plot the load versus the deflection curve we're also going to calculate the bending stress at the proportional limit. Also, we're going to calculate the modulus of elasticity of the wood and compare that to the published values for Douglas fir. So before we get started, the first thing that we want to do is we have to measure our beam. So our width is 1 and 3 eighths inches. We have a height of 3 and 3 eighths inches, and the span has been previously measured at 67 inches. So when we do this, what we're going to do is we're going to apply a load of 200 pounds right here at the center of the beam. The way that we do that is we set our unit up up here, 200 pounds, and then we're simply going to spin this wheel. As this levels off, we know that we've hit 200 pounds. Now at the same time, what we're going to do is measure the deflection right here with a small dial gauge. I'll be reading these numbers to you because obviously you can't see the dial gauge. Once we get the 200 pounds and the deflection, we're going to increase the load to 400 pounds and also get the deflection. I'll be reading these numbers to you as we go along, so if you'd like to mark them down, go right ahead. So let's go ahead and get started with the test. Now this is the steering wheel as you can see that we're going to use and we spin this to the right and this applies the load. So now we have our first reading at 200 pounds and based on the dial gauge here we have 0.135 inches of deflection. Now for our second reading, at 400 pounds, we have a total deflection of 0.252 inches. We are now at 1,200 pounds total on our beam, and our total deformation, or our total deflection, is 0.860 inches. If you take a close look here, you can see that we're well beyond three quarters of an inch in total deflection. We just got our last reading at 1,600 pounds, and our reading, our total deflection is 1.108 inches. You can probably see that this piece of wood is bending a great deal. But now we have 1,800 pounds on here, so I'm going to go ahead and try it again, and I'm going to see if we can get this piece of wood to break. So at 1,800 pounds, we didn't get this to crack. Our deflection at 1,800 pounds was 1.594 inches. We're now at 1,950 pounds, and we have a total deflection of about 1.784 inches. However, I've stopped because I can hear it beginning to crack. So hopefully with a couple of more spins, we're going to see this beam give in. After a few more spins, we hit 2,000 total pounds and had a deflection of 2.011. Like a gunshot. <laughs> okay.
So folks, as you saw, the beam finally broke. It actually broke at a total deflection of 2.24 inches, obviously almost two and a quarter inches total deflection. The load we don't know because it bounces off as soon as the beam gives in, but we know for sure that it was somewhere between 2,000 and 2,200 pounds. But now, let's go ahead and do the calculations that we discussed. Right ahead is going to be some slides. Take a look at them and see if you can follow along. Thank you. Now that we have all our data, we're going to go ahead and graph it and see if we can identify the proportional limit. Then we'll also calculate the bending stress at the proportional limit. We'll calculate our modulus of elasticity. And finally, we'll compare these numbers to the published values. Now first off, to make sure that we get an accurate graph, we want to start both our load and our deflection at zero pounds and zero inches. Then, you may recall, we started at 200 pounds and we got a deflection of 0.135 inches. So here, as you can see, we have a linear line, meaning that we are definitely not beyond the proportional limit. At 400 pounds, we got 0.252 inches of deflection. And when we check our graph, we can see that our graph is still moving in a linear fashion. Our next reading came at 1,200 pounds with a deflection of 0.86 inches. And as you can see, our graph hasn't changed, so we are still within the elastic zone. Our next reading came at 1,600 pounds with a deflection of 1.108 inches. And again, our graph continues to be linear. At 1,800 pounds, we got a deflection of 1.594. And now you can see that that graph begins to bend. This means that we are beyond the proportional limit. This means that we have left the elastic zone, meaning that if we were to remove the pressure off of the beam within the elastic zone, it would return to its original shape. However, now that we are beyond that point, if we were to take the pressure off of the beam, it would not return to its original shape. However, just to be sure, let's continue to graph the rest of our data. And here you can see that we are clearly beginning to lose the correlation between load and deflection. And our final reading at 2,000 pounds gave us a deflection of 2.011 inches. And the graph is becoming more erratic. I think we can all agree that the proportional limit was actually at 1,600 pounds. So let's go ahead and calculate our bending stress at the proportional limit. Now to calculate the bending stress is actually quite easy. We want to divide the moment by the section modulus. However, first we have to do the calculation for the moment as well as the calculation for the section modulus. Let's begin with the moment. To get the moment, what we want to do is take P, which is actually the load, or in this case, pounds, Multiply that by the length and divide that number by 4. So our equation should look like this. 1600, the number of pounds at the proportional limit, times 67 inches, divided by 4. And we should get 107,200 divided by 4 for 26,800 inch pounds. This is our moment. And now half of our equation is complete, so let's go ahead and calculate the section modulus. Now to get our section modulus, we want to take b squared times t divided by 6. 
This is where B is the depth of the beam and T is the width of the beam. And now we want to simply plug in the numbers and we should get a section modulus of 2.61 inches cubed. And now our equation should look much easier at 26,800 inch pounds divided by 2.61 cubic inches which should give us a final result of 10,268 PSI or pounds per square inch. So now let's take a look at the published values and see if our data is realistic. We see that the ultimate stress is 11,000 PSI listed for the published value. For our piece of wood we got 10,268. Though the ultimate stress and the stress that we achieved is going to depend upon moisture conditions, species, as well as grade, it is safe to say that our data is reasonable. Now to find the modulus of elasticity, we're going to use the equation delta equals P times L cubed divided by 48 times the modulus of elasticity times the moment of inertia. Now believe it or not, this is a lot easier than it looks because delta is deflection, P is pounds, L is the length of the beam, E is the modulus of elasticity, and I is the moment of inertia. So let's think about what we know when that beam hit the proportional limit. First of all, we know that the deflection was 1.108 inches. We also know that the pounds was 1600. We also know that the length was 67 inches. And we're looking for the modulus of elasticity as well as the moment of inertia. And again, let's plug in the numbers that we know. 1.108 is the delta, or in our case, the deflection. And this equals 1600 the load, in our case pounds, times the span cubed. And this is going to be divided by 48 times the modulus of elasticity times the moment of inertia. Since we have an equation for the moment of inertia, we'll solve for the moment of inertia and then we will algebraically solve for the modulus of elasticity. Moment of inertia is B cubed times T divided by 12, where B is the depth of the beam and T is the width of the beam. And all we have to do now is plug in our numbers. 3.375 cubed times 1.375 divided by 12 gives us a moment of inertia of 4.404. So now, let's return to our equation for modulus of elasticity. Once again, we have 1.108, which is the delta, or the deflection in this case, and that equals 1,600 pounds times 67 inches cubed, divided by 48 times the modulus of elasticity, times now 4.404. And again, the 4.404 represents the moment of inertia. And we can now solve this algebraically by simply switching the modulus of elasticity with the deflection. So if we take the deflection, the 1.108, put it in the middle, and move the modulus of elasticity to the other side, we have E, the modulus of elasticity, equals 1,600 pounds, times 67 inches cubed divided by 48 times the deflection 1.108 times the moment of inertia 4.404. We can now do our calculations 1600 pounds times the 67 cubed is 300,763 divided by the denominator, which equates out to 234.2, should give us some crazy numbers like 481,220,800, 
divided by 234, which means our modulus of elasticity is 2,054,743. And finally, let's compare our data to the published values. Again, for Douglas fir, the modulus of elasticity is listed at 1.95 times 10 to the 6th. We got 2.054 times 10 to the 6th. Again, considering the criteria, this would be considered reasonable. And, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to conclude Properties of Wood.